participating. We are MVPs because we are learning and we are sharing. It's not the other way around. We are not sharing because we are MVPs. They are just normal people like us. And it was an amazing experience. And I have memories that I'm uh, constantly recalling and, and cherish. So this is something that I achieved uh, uh, um, based on my efforts and my uh, passion to develop myself and also to develop the ServiceNow space as a whole. Hello, welcome back here at Feeling Terrific. Today I have a real honor to talk with uh, Martin, Martin Ivanov. Really happy that you took the time that you're interested also in this conversation. Maybe um, let's start with uh, yeah, a few words about you. Who are you? Yeah, first of all, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me today. Uh, my name is Martin Ivanov, as you said, and I am uh, I have been in the ServiceNow space for over six years now, going to seven soon. Uh, before that, I was actually uh, doing something really, really different. Uh, it was my my university background is actually on environmental engineering, which apart from the engineering thing has nothing to do with technology. But <laughs> yeah, at some point I, I, had, I decided to switch. I have always been interested in, in technology and, and I took a, a very intensive programming course for six months and then I landed a consultancy company which was doing ITSM and, and process consulting and all that stuff. And uh, shortly after that, I had the chance to touch ServiceNow and ever since then, we have been in love. Uh, <laughs> like it, it, It's been wild, actually. I started from the very, very uh, basics. I had nothing to do with this thing. I had to learn everything from the beginning. But now, six years later, I am actually a certified technical architect. And this year, I had the honor to, to get the double MVP award from ServiceNow as well. So yeah, quite a good recognition. Congratulations. Uh, I think uh, we well, we can say that, right? Uh, maybe let's uh, yeah broaden it up a little bit. So maybe let's start from the beginning, right? So, um, so you're still smiling. So I hope uh, that, uh, yeah, working in the service now context is still something which gives you energy. And please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, you also just scratched it, right? So, how did it come that, yeah, the ITSM and service now approached into your life? Was accepted in this in this company uh, to work uh, as a consultant without zero experience, for which I am grateful. And I was working working actually with another tool, which was uh, how to say one of the predecessors predecessors of, of ServiceNow. But one day a colleague of mine told me, "If I show you ServiceNow, you will never touch Remedy again." And this is exactly what happened. <laughs> and yeah, I started with ITSM. I, I have worked with this consultancy for a while, but then I decided to to leave, and I went to a company which is actually a customer. So for two years, I was developing uh, internally for this company. And this is where my my interest was, uh, uh, the spark was lit. And I started learning more and more. I, ha I had a colleague who was willing to share all of his knowledge, very knowledgeable. And actually, he was helping me to develop myself on a daily basis, learning new and new things. And yeah, at that point, uh, the only thing that mattered for me, it was not the money. It was uh, the thing that I wanted to develop myself. I still want to do it on a daily basis want to become better and better. And yeah, this is how ITSM came into, into my uh, life. Another two years later, I decided to leave this company and now I'm like working for one of the biggest consultancies where I have the chance to, to touch different customers, implement different modules, uh, be part of challenging projects. And this is what is driving me forward. Regarding personal development though, how are you making sure that you are, yeah, maybe also uh, having a structured approach? But also from a mental perspective, how are you making sure that you're always curious, always ready to learn something new? It is not easy uh, because, you know, ServiceNow is producing a huge amount of content on a daily basis. Sometimes I feel bad if I cannot consume the whole content because, you know, I have my job responsibilities. I have a family as well. And yeah, but... Um, the thing is that uh, ServiceNow, you know, the, the uh, goal of Bill McDermott to, to make ServiceNow the, the defining service, uh, software company of the 21st century. So uh, basically what they are doing is they are trying to solve new and new problems that their enterprises have. And uh, those, they are uh, producing new new modules, solving different pro pro problems and also uh, uh, producing content so that the uh, people who are already in the space can easily get uh, the new knowledge as well. 
if there is something new, I always want to scratch it. If I scratch it and if it is interesting enough, then I can go deeper and deeper. And uh, uh, this is how actually uh, my sleep is getting less and less. <laughs> I'm spending <laughs> some time sleepless night just to learn something new and, and be prepared for the for the day after. It might be the case. So the thing is, um, I or we cannot see that you are tired, right? So even though you have good coffee or you have a good cream. So what is it? I have a good coffee. I actually <laughs> cannot start the morning without a coffee. But uh, actually, um, you know, this feeling of progress, this feeling of, of um being one step ahead of the others is actually something that is uh, giving me the power to live uh, with a smile on a daily basis. When you're doing something that is uh, satisfying you, then the, the rest doesn't matter, actually. Would you say this is also something which is kind of the basis or accelerator to become an um, MVP within the ServiceNow space? Well, there is something that that I'm pointing in in every uh, podcast that I'm that I'm participating. We are MVPs because we are learning and we are sharing. It's not the other way around. We are not sharing because we are MVPs. And people, uh, new people from coming into the space, are always asking, "How can I become an MVP?" It is not a goal that you work towards. It's the other way around. If you have the knowledge sharing culture in your mind, if you're willing to do this then the award will come naturally. Basically, the, the, it is designed to, to, to reward the people who are investing in the knowledge sharing, but it shouldn't be the, the, the end goal. The end goal should be uh, the development of the community, the development of the, of the ServiceNow space. This is the way that we can go further uh, together as a team, even though we, we are not working in the same team. What would you say is driving you intrinsically to share knowledge? It is actually uh, one of the things that helped me uh, to become to, to come to this stage was the, the knowledge that was already shared in the community and the people who were ready to answer my question. You know, the ServiceNow community is one of the uh, the best communities out there. There are helpful people on every corner, and a, when you're stuck with a task, even uh, you know, especially in the very beginning, if you're Uh, asking basic questions, you will find very quickly people to answer your question in the ServiceNow community. And this is how it happened with me. Some basic stuff, uh, how to assign a role to a user, you know, really basic, but in the beginning, you cannot know everything. And I have asked, asked multiple questions and I've read multiple articles. At some point, I just felt uh, prepared enough to help give back the community and help the others. And this is how it all started. I started uh, asking questions at some point when I learned something uh, which was not, uh, you know, uh, common sense or mainstream. I uh, was designing to to share this in, a, in, a, in an article in the community. And this is how I started writing articles, actually. What do you think is the importance of empowerment in this context? The thing is, you know, in, in the beginning, you also mentioned that uh, you are grateful that uh, the company provided you an opportunity mm -hmm. to step into a field where that is new to you, right? And I, I'm kind of thinking how it would be similar to the service now context and the community, right? So for example, when people are joining the community without having a knowledge at all or, ba or basic knowledge, right? And mm -hmm. when, when there is someone who provides more knowledge or maybe also um, investing time and in, to meet the other one and explaining something. This is also, at least from my perspective, empowerment towards mm -hmm. another person, right? To give them okay. the opportunity to grow. And the question is, what do you think? Is it important that someone yeah, provides and gets the empowerment? Or do you think empowerment in this yeah. context doesn't make sense? It is it is really important, and I also I, I've always tried to 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 mentor people inside a company. Uh, I'm helping you know the, the the new joiners to find their path to to help them uh, with the, I'm trying to help them with the daily tasks. I have also been part of the uh, ServiceNow Developer Mentorship Program. I don't know if you are aware of that. There was the first edition last last year, and uh, everyone could apply for uh, to be a mentor or to be a mentee. I applied for both. I didn't get my mentor, but I got my mentee. And we had successful 12-month uh, journey where we were meeting every month. We were discussing stuff. Actually, the guy decided at some point not to work with ServiceNow, but his interested, interest was uh, still on. And we continued uh, with him t towards, the, towards the end. And he made a quite a good progress, even though this was not his daily job. 
So I'm happy that, that I still kept the interest of someone to be in the space, even though he's not uh, do this, not doing this for a living. No, th this is really great. What do you think in this regard, um, the, um, a mentorship, a relationship, what do you think, what's making such successful? The, the passion from the both sides. From one side, the passion from the, from the mentor to uh, teach someone else. But, you know, you cannot teach someone who is not willing to be taught. So uh, the, the even more important driving force is actually the passion of the mentee, the person who is joining the space, who uh, wants to progress. This person has to have a um, uh, clearly defined goal. He want, he needs, uh, you know, at least to know what is the, the, the direction that they are heading to. And then it's the job of the mentor to help them find the, the right path, the right resources, the, the right way of, of learning and development. So, uh, yeah, the, the role of the mentor is to share what they learned throughout the, the way, just to make the, the mentee's life a little bit easier and a little bit more structured. And here's empowerment again. Yeah. <laughs> Great. No, and um, we tackled now a few topics, right? But what we haven't discussed uh, so far is what is it what you actually do? So what is a technical architect? Technical architect is a person who, uh, there are multiple uh, responsibilities of the technical architect, but the technical architect usually is a person with a lot of experience in this, in the platform, knowing the, uh, the pitfalls and all that stuff, uh, knowing the different modules and how they interact with it, uh, with each other. But also uh, it's not a purely technical person. This person must be uh, um, uh, skilled enough With the, with the soft skills and stuff, just to, to talk to customers, to identify their needs and their pain points, to propose the right solutions, to articulate the value of the platform. And at some point when, when he has uh, uh, enough information to come up with a good, uh, sustainable, scalable, performant technical solution. This is uh, in a nutshell what the, what the technical <laughs> architect does. You know, it's really interesting um, because... Uh... At least for, for me, when, when I was thinking about engineering developers and so forth, right, I thought the importance of soft skills isn't necessarily given, right? So it's interesting right. to see that there are also roles out there that requires actually um, good soft it skills. Is, it is in consultancy, even on a, on a developer level, uh, we have all of our uh, consultants or all of our developers are actually communicating with the customer not on the level that I just mentioned, uh, like the, the technical architects communicating, but when they get a task to develop something, it is not always 100% clear what should happen. You know, we as architects or, or uh, as a customer providing the requirements, they are trying to, to make it as clear as possible, but sometimes you need to clarify some, some small tiny thing and it is not necessary to go to the architect or the PM uh, to, to, to clarify this thing, we empower the, the uh, developers to communicate di directly with the people who are providing the requirements. And these are soft skills to, you know, to be able to, to write a good email, to, to ask uh, your question in a proper way, to uh, sit on a meeting with a customer to communicate. These are all soft skills. The, uh, another, another soft skill is the, the way to communicate within the team uh, clearly what your pain points are because you know uh, with the developers we have these uh, daily meetings where we are uh, discussing what's been done in the previous day what what will be done today and these are really short meetings like 15 minutes or so and if uh, the soft skills uh, are not there if the, the proper communication is not there they then then uh, they won't be effective at all and yeah it's it's really really important and, and the better uh, the soft skills are the higher the, the customer satisfaction is at the end of the project. I can say that. So you also uh, mentioned in the beginning that uh, you're also still on a um, track of personal development, right? So I'm thinking, do you have an example for us where you yeah, experienced a situation where you recognized that you should adapt your communication style? Yes, I actually I'm doing this on a daily basis. I am as a developer, as a technical person, I, I'm I'm pretty straightforward. Sometimes I'm I'm coming, I'm, I'm just starting the email. Hello, I need this and this. Bye. Uh, uh, 
but yeah, this is not exactly the style that the customer loves. They they want a little bit of an introduction, how my email finds you well, and, and all this. Uh, it's not unnecessary, but from the developer point of view, this is um, something that can be skipped. Actually, learning this stuff helped me a lot. I mean, it's a way better communication starter than just uh, hello and straight the question and, and, and goodbye. Uh, communicating internally in the team as well. Uh, I am sometimes, again, coming from the my technical nature, I am um, really focused on the detail. I'm a big preacher of the of the best practices, the development best practices, and I am. Uh, when I see something in a code that I don't like, I'm reaching out directly to the person. Uh, in the beginning, it was, hey, this is, uh, this shouldn't be like that. Now I expanded it a little bit and I say, hey, this shouldn't be like that. It should be like this and this because this is the good practice. And this is a general recommendation in, in, in the my communication style. Don't only point the problem, but also provide the solution as well. Yeah. And this is this is something that I that I learned uh, uh, throughout the way. One of my managers says, uh, when I communicate something, or when someone communicates something, he says, "Don't be part of the problem; be part of the solution." So, this is a a good sentence that I'll remember probably till the end of my life. Yeah, th I think this is a really great shout out. And yeah. um, as you also just outlined, the communication is or can be kind of crucial, right? I mean, when someone um, yeah, visits your LinkedIn profile, it also says uh, knowledge speaker. So maybe you can tell us what knowledge is basically, but also how did it come that you uh, yeah, were a speaker there? Knowledge, knowledge uh, uh, is a masterpiece because you know, there, there cannot be a better title for this conference. This is actually the, 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 uh, the main ServiceNow conference uh, during the year, the event that, that uh, uh, collects multiple people. Like this year, we were around 12, no, more, 15,000 people in an expo uh, room in Las Vegas, actually. Uh, and uh, I had the chance to speak at Knowledge along with, with three of my colleagues, uh, three of my MVP, fellow MVPs. We were talking about the power of the community, how uh, people can benefit from it, but also how they can contribute to it. So basically, the, the things that we are talking today with you. And it was a uh, experience like never before, like sitting in front of uh, a lot of people, curious to to learn more, to to learn from your experience or from um, from what you have to say. And I am really really grateful for the chance to speak uh, that knowledge, and I'll do my best to to do uh, to be there uh, next year as well. Actually, this was my second knowledge last year. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, uh, we had conferences around the world. There was one in the Netherlands, so I was there. It was my first knowledge conference, and, and uh, being there, I promised myself that whenever I am able, I will attend knowledge. This is something. And, and last year, I was uh, attending a lot of sessions, trying to get as much knowledge as I can. This year, I tried to make uh, as much um, people relationships as I can, because, you know, all these people, the fellow MVPs, there are a lot of uh, other people in the community that are not MVPs, but ServiceNow employees or, uh, you know, um, uh, famous developers or architects. I try to get in touch uh, uh, with them just to exchange few words to see that they're just normal people like us. And it was an amazing experience. And I have memories that I'm... Uh, constantly recalling and, and cherish. Yeah, based on your uh, on your smile, I get uh, goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Have, have you been have you been on knowledge? Unfortunately not, but uh, shout out to my manager. So hopefully there will be a business case coming up. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, let's Mr. create Man someone. Hey, hey, Mr. Manager, Christian needs to be on the knowledge 24. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I take it with no, me. Actually, actually, there is a, a straightforward process. You can submit your uh, topic if you want. And if you are selected, then you will get a free pass. And all that you need to cover is the travel expenses. Coming back to, to, to your speaker experience, how did you feel just moments before going onto the stage? Oh, the, my, it's always like that. When I'm um, about to do something significant, you, my, my, my heartbeat is going really high. And, you know, my, 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 my mouth is, is getting... Uh, uh, you know, 
right? And there are thoughts in my my head. Am I going to do it right? Am I not? Am I am I going to mistake some something? And uh, yeah, it's. I think it's normal. There are people who are uh, seasoned presenters, and they they are sharing that they are experiencing this kind this kind of stuff uh, before each presentation. So I think it's normal. Of course, it's getting better and better with with the multiple um, uh, uh, presentations that that someone deliver, but. Uh, at least for me, this is this is what's happening. You know, uh, it's a moment of unconfidence, a moment of stress. But when I uh, go up there, I just release the whole thing and I speak uh, and I and I'm saying what I have to say. And, and I can say that it went pretty good uh, this year. Yeah, maybe so next you would year say... I'll be better. <laughs> so fingers crossed. So would you say that preparation is key in this context? Preparation is actually the key of everything, whether you're going to a customer meeting, customer workshop, presenting knowledge, or presenting at your uh, capstone exam of this, uh, the Certified Technical Architect program, preparation is a key. And I want to be prepared, and I love to be prepared. I want this is giving me confidence, and you know, practice makes perfect. For example, uh, for this event, I was preparing a week ago for my uh, final capstone presentation at, at, at the CTA program. I was preparing for two weeks all day long, like uh, eight hours a day. I was uh, rehearsing and rehearsing and refining my presentation, rehearsing again until it went perfect. Yeah, I would say this is commitment. This is uh, yeah, yeah re really inspiring, to be honest, because it also just showcase, right, so that Maybe there is a certification or a title or whatsoever, but all the effort that is put into upfront before doesn't or isn't really um, seeable. So nobody mm -hmm. sees that usually. And this is really, yeah. Yeah, there is one, one, one of the books that I read recently is called the 10x rule, which basically says that if you want to achieve a result of one, you need to put 10 times more effort in it in the in the backstage if you want to be better than the than the others compared to the others you need to put 10 times more effort just to achieve that that end goal that you have in your mind yeah i'll have a look i'll have a look when it comes to preparation though for the um, speaker experience right how did you prepare for that <sighs> I was imagining that uh, you know how we we go there. It's it was not a conversation. It was uh, actually it was a conversation between uh, we were four people on the stage. One of us was asking questions, and the three three of us were were uh, answering these questions. So I got in touch with the person who was uh, who was the interviewer. We uh, we spoke through the questions. I tried to prepare the the, the answers that that I'm going to give to the questions that uh, that will be asked to me. Uh, you know. They were not perfect from the first inter iteration, but you know, uh, going from Europe to the United States, there is a 14 hours of a flight, and I had the time to to uh, rethink all of my answers. And um, just uh, before the one day before the the speech, actually, I had the the final answers to my questions, and this is how I prepared. But it's a process; it's not something that is happening uh, for one hour or 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, got it. But um, yeah, how was it then? Also talking in front of over ten thousand people, I, I'm I'm just imagining it, and it's like, yeah, in front of the ten thousand people is it, it's the only only the keynote speech. You know, uh, this is mm. the the only uh, session during the day which gathers all of the people in a single place. Apart from that, for these three days, there are around six hundred sessions meaning that there are different rooms or theaters around the place. And I think on my presentation, the, the maximum seat capacity was 250. But still, it is stressful because you need to, to uh, watch the, uh, you know, face the people. Uh, I have the, the established eye contact. At the same time, uh, remember the, the answers to your questions or think if something uh, unplanned happens. So it is, it is not easy. But it, it is definitely rewarding. You know, I, I, I felt really satisfied after it. So next year keynote session is yours. Uh let's hope so, but I don't <laughs> think I don't think it's gonna be next year. Maybe at some point in the future. <laughs> Perfect. So in the last episode uh, we introduced something or tried something out and um so something new. And um basically um 
the person or the guest uh, from a previous episode ask a question um, for the next one, right? And the question from the last uh, conversation is basically, what do you think? Why have you been invited to this conversation today? I think that this is actually uh, the fruit from my efforts during the last six years. I try to, to develop myself, but at the same time, I try to give back to the community. And I think this is the key because uh, uh, maybe I'll share a detail here, but the message that you approached me with was, hey, MVP, this sounds fancy. Want to talk about it on my podcast? Yes, I want. So this is something that I achieved uh, uh, um, based on my efforts and my uh, passion to develop myself and also to develop the ServiceNow space as a whole. And this is the, the answer to my question. And thank to Aurora. She's, re <laughs> yeah. she's really amazing. She's the guest who asked this question, right? This is correct. Yeah, yeah. this is really, correct. really amazing person. I, I really love her content. It's, it's straightforward, right on the, on the spot, but interesting at the same time. Yes, yes, I totally agree with that. And thank you for, for answering the question. And now for you, what question do you want the next person to be answered? The question to the next person is how are you managing to keep up with all of the new things that ServiceNow is releasing? This is something that I really struggle with and I want to get the viewpoint of the other people in the space. Got it, got it. We'll take it uh, with me. But we are at the end, uh, Martin. It was a real pleasure. Um, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, Monday morning. Um, thanks also for the yeah early coffee you, you took. And um, yeah, thank you. The pleasure, the pleasure was all mine. Thank you for having me here. And good Perfect. luck with the podcast. Thank you. Take care. See you soon. See you. Bye.